Welcome to Mayo Medical Laboratory's Hot Topics. These presentations provide short discussion of current topics and may be helpful to you in your practice. Our speaker for this program is Dr. Ravinder Singh, Assistant Professor of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology in the Division of Clinical Biochemistry and Immunology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Dr. Singh will be discussing the toxicity of vitamin D. Thank you, Dr. Singh, for presenting with us today. Thank you, Kara. So objective today is to discuss the case of hypercalcemia due to vitamin D toxicity. I have no disclosures related to this talk and I won't be discussing any drug either off-label or investigational use. So the learning points for the presentation today would be that vitamin D toxicity is not a myth but is a reality. Vitamin D is a pro-hormone and is part of the complex endocrine system. Vitamin D toxicity is not limited to the children. So regarding the case, this was a case which came to Mayo Clinic. A four-month-old girl was admitted to the pediatric intensive care unit. Her calcium was very high when she was admitted 18, and then it was uh, still up and down, and it was 15.5 and 15.4. And her phosphorus was to 1.8. Parathyroid hormone was less than 6. PTHRP, or parathyroid hormone-related peptide was normal. Physician was concerned and she called the lab, what will cause PTH to be low? And are there any interferences in the PTH assays? And the lab looked at the result and verified that there was nothing wrong with the lab assay and the PTH was really low, which was less than six. A little bit more history on the baby here. Ultrasound of the abdomen was normal, but ultrasound of the kidneys did show nephrocalcinosis, which is small stones and damage to the kidney. Further finding more about the history of the baby, baby was being breastfed, and according to the mother, she was also giving some teething medicine, some kind of homeopathic medicine, and mom does not remember the brand of the natural vitamin D, but she did say she was giving some vitamin D to this newborn baby. The challenge for our physician at Mayo Clinic was, what is the diagnosis of hypercalcemia? Could it be vitamin D toxicity? But the physician was thinking very hard, if mom is giving excess vitamin D, then in addition to the high calcium levels, phosphorus levels should also be high. But if you remember in the previous slide, they were on the low end or normal. Further history about this particular child is this baby was sick right from birth, failure to thrive. Baby used to vomit frequently at home every couple of hours. Baby was vomiting consisting of breast milk and partially digested breast milk, and baby had history of diarrhea with multiple loose watery stools every day. According to the parents, baby has decreased appetite and just seems to be more tired and kind of out of it. And uh, physicians and nurses also noted that she had lost 200 grams of her weight since her last visit, which was one month ago. As physicians were attending this particular child, they did notice that uh, her presentation was consistent with dehydration. And in order to correct that, she received fluid bolus uh, fluids and repeat labs. 12 hours showed some improvement in uh, blood urine nitrogen, as well as uh, there was a dec decline in her total calcium. This particular slide shows uh, her course of calcium, which was high which did not improve just with simple hydration, then physicians used a very potent drug called calcitonin, which normalized the calcium, and then the baby was discharged from the St. Mary's Hospital. But as soon as the baby was discharged and the effect of the calcitonin drug was over, then calcium came back. Baby was readmitted to the hospital again, and then baby was treated with a different bisphosphonate drug, which is called pamidronate. And then as you can notice, the baby's calcium was normalized during the course of the treatment. The curiosity with the patient care team was that, is there anything in mother's condition which could be contributing to the hypercalcium in this particular child? Looking at the electrolytes for the mom, it was good to find that her calcium, potassium, and creatinine were very normal. And we also tested vitamin D levels in the mother 
which was very normal, 25 hydroxy vitamin D was only 13 and 125 dihydroxy vitamin D was also 39. So these labs indicate that there was nothing from the mother which was transferring uh, to the baby in the breast milk causing her hypercalcemia. But in this slide, if you compare the lab results of the infant with the mother head to head, of course we know that baby's calcium was very high and we already noticed baby's phosphate was lower compared to the reference range which goes from 2.5 to 4.5. But to everyone's surprise in the care team was that her vitamin D level turned out to be 293. And correspondingly 125 dihydroxy vitamin D was also 138. So vitamin D either uh, made in the skin or circulation through the sunlight or taken through the diet quickly gets converted to 25 hydroxy vitamin D through an enzyme called 25 hydroxylase in the liver but then bioactive hormone which is 125 dihydroxy vitamin D is only synthesized on a need basis by the kidney using an enzyme called 1-alpha hydroxylase. And 125 dihydroxy vitamin D levels are in picogram per ml versus 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels are nanogram per ml. And 25 hydroxy vitamin D is accepted as a biomarker to determine vitamin D deficiencies or toxicity. This particular slide now highlights that vitamin D endocrine system is very complex. In situations when the calcium is low, the calcium sensing receptor will uh, act on the calcium sensing receptor in the parathyroid gland. Parathyroid hormone will be secreted. Parathyroid hormone will convert 25 hydroxy vitamin D by the kidney into 125 hydroxy vitamin D. Then 125 dihydroxy vitamin D will help in absorbing calcium and phosphorus from the diet through the receptors in the intestine and the PTH also helps in absorbing the calcium. Today we are focusing on the hypercalcemia, not um, the hypocalcemia or calcium deficiency or vitamin D deficiencies. So in this case, as you can imagine, if the vitamin D levels were high, the PTH will be suppressed because it was hypercalcemia. Thus the body will try to downregulate the synthesis of 125 dihydroxy vitamin D. Getting back to the baby in the intensive care unit, further talking to the mom, mom did say that she has been giving uh, this particular baby supplemental vitamin D as mom's friend convinced her that vitamin D is good and safe. Mom thinks that she was giving 100 units, which was um, kind of accepted uh, guidelines to use that kind of amount, and she was giving 0.25 ml. Mom was requested to provide the supplement and was given to the lab to find out what exactly is the concentration of vitamin D in the supplement. So lab tested the vitamin D. This is different than the 25 hydroxy vitamin D, which is a biomarker. So we had to develop a special test and then vitamin D was found to be threefold higher in a drop like 6,000 international units per drop compared to what was listed on the label, which was 2,000 international drop. And also mother was giving full dropper, which was many, many more than uh, was intended. And overall calculation showed that on an average, mom was giving 50,000 units to this particular baby daily for months, and that probably would have resulted in hypercalcemia and vitamin D toxicity. So this is the 25 hydroxy vitamin D data on the y-axis on the left, and then you can see the total calcium on the right. So this was over a period of almost two months now that it took almost a few months to for the baby's vitamin D to normalize, which is a white line here. And since the vitamin D stayed still in um, higher than the normal range for babies, calcium was difficult to control with the treatment and the drugs. After another two months, baby is now six months old. And uh, according to the physician, there are no concerns for six months old young lady. And she is doing quite well and her development has really picked up. 
So vitamin D toxicity uh, or hypercalcemia is not limited to children only. It has also been reported in adults. This particular case report was reported in New England Journal of Medicine in 2001. And if you notice here, calcium was also high, 15. And upon treatment, which was similar to the treatment we discussed in this child, was brought into the normal range. But interestingly, again, this patient was taking a lot of vitamin D, and vitamin D level was 500, which is much, much higher than the safe uh, zone for vitamin D levels. And it took almost 30 months for this particular individual to bring his vitamin D no uh, levels in the safe zone. At Mayo Clinic, we also had one case uh, in adult. This particular individual was taking some kind of chocolate which was supplemented with the vitamin D. It's called Sunny D chocolate. And this person also developed hypercalcemia. And for the testing, vitamin D, it was 350 or so. And as you can notice, again, it took more than a year to normalize this particular vitamin D. 25-hydroxy vitamin D in this individual. In this case, we also confirmed uh, vitamin D storage levels in the fat biopsy, which were also reported to be high, which is, again, very invasive position and is not recommended for every patient. So this particular concern about uh, the toxicity and the hypercalcemia was also brought up by the Institution of Medicine, which was a report published in 2010. And this particular group of experts and the committee concluded that majority of the Americans and Canadians are receiving adequate amounts of both calcium and vitamin D, and supplementation should uh, be considered when it is really clinically needed and rather they were even further concerned about that too much of these nutrients may be harmful. This particular slide summarizes that once you take vitamin D either through the diet supplements or through the UVB light which is from the skin that kidneys will help in clearing the excess 25 hydroxy vitamin D or excess of 125 hydroxy vitamin D by using another enzyme which is called 24 hydroxylase by converting 25 hydroxy vitamin D into 2425 or converting 125 into 12425 hydroxy vitamin D. But when there is an excess of vitamin D, these enzymes get saturated and patients will develop hypercalcemia due to vitamin D toxicity. Again, this is again summarizing that vitamin D is a pro-hormone. It's not a benign compound. It has uh, multiple effects in physiology. It will downregulate PTH. And um, as you noticed in our case, we still can't explain why the phosphate is low in some of the recent cases we have observed even though the traditional book knowledge is that both calcium and phosphorus should be high. So we are investigating that. Is it a lab methodology issue or is it a clinical um, issue? We don't have an answer for this yet. These are some of the references uh, for your consideration which have been used in the preparation of this uh, particular talk, even though there is a lot of literature and a lot of new publications are coming every month in this area. Thank you, Kara.